Hello and welcome to the final video in this series. In this video we'll be looking at Xamarin natives rather than Xamarin forms and implementing the same thing from the docs that we looked at with Xamarin native. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. This is going to be in multi-platform uh, blank native app. I'll call this the same thing just so that we can reuse the um, we can reuse Firebase so that we can reuse uh, our provisioning profile so that we can reuse our certificates as well. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, look at the shared shared library and this is going to have exactly the same thing apart from the XAML and XAML.cs files. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an, uh, an existing folder and this existing folder is the same folder from our Xamarin Forms, uh, Xamarin Forms project. Next thing we're going to do is also add the models. Now what I'm also going to do is add uh, the bootstrap file as well as the config file. So add those two. The next thing I'm going to do is go through them and first of all we need newtonsoft.json so I'll add that to all three solutions here manage NuGet packages and uh, newtonsoft.json I'll add them add this to all three the next thing I'm going to do is also add another NuGet package and that is actually Xamarin Essentials I'm also going to add this to all three now what I need to do is uh, configure Xamarin Essentials first go to main activity and over here, just under base.onCreate, I'll do xamarin.essentials.platform.init. This is, uh, and I'll put this saved instance state. And this is needed to um, allow Xamarin Essentials to work essentially. What we'll also need to do is add an override over here. And this is in the Xamarin in the Android projects, by the way. This will just, uh, if we do need any permissions, then Xamarin, Xamarin Essentials needs this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is um, we're basically done with this. Notice that I have left the same uh, the same namespace here, and instead of push demo app, see if you look at my class, it'll be push demo app zn. You can just leave the same one and it won't make much of a difference. I'll delete my class because we don't need that. I'll add the existing folder from Android for services. That has exactly what we need. And I'll also add uh, our Google services JSON. And now we need to uh, manage NuGet packages for Android. We need Xamarin uh, Google Play services dot base this one same one add that package okay once that's been added uh, we'll manage new get packages and we'll add xamarin dot firebase dot messaging which is this one add the latest stable we'll need to look at uh, google services json build action google services json that should be available now and what we're also going to do is now uh, configure main activity now main activity We'll have uh, we'll have a count here. We don't need that, and that's in here as well. Don't worry about any of that because we've got a template anyway generated by Visual Studio. Uh, we'll need to change launch mode here to launch mode dot, and I'll just use add a using directive to make it simpler. Single top. What I'll also do is add the same exact things we had in our other one. So we had um, these fields here, and we'll need a using directive to push demo app dot services. And here we'll have um, bootstrap dot begin uh, over here, and we'll pass our device installation service. 
We'll also add our notification registration service, which is here. And we'll need to initialize this. Uh, in order to initialize it, we need this line of code here. And we do need a using directive there and there. The next thing we do is uh, check whether notifications are supported. If they are, we need to call this line of code. And if you remember, this is not the deprecated version. This is the, the updated version. We need a using directive to firebase.messaging. And this, well, we need to actually implement the interface first. So we'll implement uh, androids.gms dot tasks dot i on success listener implement that interface and we have a method generated here and for that method we need device installation service dot token equals firebase messaging dot instance dot get token dot to string we also need our uh, process notification actions method see I'm reusing code from the uh, from the Xamarin Forms app, and we'll also need to override the on new intent method with the same thing process notifications intent, and we'll also need to call process notifications intent after after we set our content view here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is actually. Uh, configure this layout that we've set over here. So if we go to uh, resources, layout, main.axml, on Windows this might be XML rather than AXML, it doesn't really make much of a difference. What I'm going to do here is first tidy this up. I'll copy this button here and make a new button and I'll call this one the register button. And I'll call this one the deregister button. And our strings, we'll call them register button text and deregister button text. And we'll have to edit value string.xml. Uh, we've got here register button text. I'll just copy that and paste it. Deregister button text. This one will be register. This one will be deregister. Uh, we've got errors in file generation. I think we're fine now. So we've got our register button text and our deregister button text. This will come up with the correct writing here. And once we've got that, we can go back to our main activity. After we've said process notifications, we can uh, look at button, register button. And use find view by ID so a button, and the ID is resource dot ID dot register button. Okay, I am getting a problem here. We need Xamarin dot Android X dot lifecycle dot live data and Xamarin dot Android X dot browser. Um, before I do that, I think if we go to Android manifest, make sure we're targeting. Uh, first of all, our minimum is Android eight or 8 and our target is 11 and if we go to the project itself in general I will select Android 11 so I'll also add the following NuGet packages xamarin.androidx.livecycle.livedata we need that and we also need xamarin.androidx.browser okay if I cut this now and paste it and save. Hopefully our, error, our resources will be updated correctly. Errors in file generation. We also need um, xamarin.androidx.lifecycle.legacy
okay our files have been generated successfully so now here you can see resource.id.register button is fine we also need deregister button I'll call that deregister button so we'll say register button dot click plus equals and we'll uh, subscribe to that event handler we'll have deregister deregister button dot click plus equals deregister button dot click I'll just put register on top of deregister so it makes a bit more sense and in here we'll be doing what we were implementing in our uh, XAML files in our main page .xaml. for Android I think the equivalent the best equivalent here is to create a toast first of all we need our notification registration service dot register device async I'll grab that as a task uh, for some reason I can't get continue with to work properly so we'll just go with that then we'll say uh, toast dot make text and the text will, will the context will be application dot context and the text will be uh, depending on is task dot is faulted if that is true then we'll uh, show the exception message otherwise we'll say device registered and I'll show that as well so that the text is to that the toast is shown I'll also add in here toast length dot long okay now the same thing would go for deregister except this time we'll deregister device async and device deregistered and that should be it now I'm going to run it I expect to get a few errors let's see how let's see what happens okay so I get four errors in uh, building it says it can't find 10 Android X assemblies now it appears one of the problems I had was if you go to your packages and for me xamarin.essentials had a warning next to it saying package needs retargeting and once you click on the warning and click retarget it should work fine. One thing I forgot actually and this doesn't uh, this doesn't cause the application to crash but um, if you go here and uh, add the read phone state permission first of all the internet permission and also the access network state permission uh, once those are done you can build and see what happens hopefully this will be fine okay we are deploying to our device deployment failed okay as I said I need to Disable fast assembly deployment. Okay, we've got uh, actually it has deployed, it has built. Then we've had an error when we've tried to open the application, and I think we can fix this the same way as we did with Xamarin Forms. Uh, if you manage NuGet packages and search Google Dagger and update this package. and if I build and run again let's see what happens okay so once we've got it up and running uh, make sure you register we get a device registered message so we'll go to postman click send and we get a notification push demo message from postman now you may have problems with this it might not uh, the notification might not be received and uh, I'll give you a few things to check the first thing to check is to make sure your API key uh, for Firebase is correct second thing to make sure is obviously you get a 200 OK message here the next thing to make sure is that your app uh, hasn't been registered before and if it has it's been uninstalled or deregistered so for example if I were to open the app now and to deregister and send obviously I don't we'll close it in fact I'll send 
I don't expect to receive a notification and I haven't. This is from before. Um, I'll just demonstrate that again. Obviously, we won't get a notification. However, if I open the app now and register and let it run in the background and send, I receive the notification again. Now, before I go on to iOS, what I'm going to do is some demonstration with tags as well. I'll do this in a very um, unhealthy way, really, because you wouldn't really do this uh, in a real life scenario. So let me close that. I'm going to delete the app from my Android emulator uh, because I will have issues otherwise when I come to run it again. Uh, what I'll do is first of all go to layouts, so that will be in uh, resources, layout, main.axml. Here I'll copy this button and I'll change it to an edit text and I'll call this the tag edit text and we don't need any text inside and uh, that should be all fine. No input type specified, we can, uh, we can specify the input type, It'll just be text. Okay. And as you can see now, we have an edit text here. What we can do is go back to our main activity, and where we um, where we register, I can actually pass the tags. And the tags, let's uh, let's just use find view by ID, edit text, uh, resource dot id dot tag edit text dot text. So I'm not sure if you've realized but what I'm doing here is instead of registering without tags I'm going to register with a tag and that tag is going to be whatever is in the tag edit text. Okay I'll just run this again. Okay so our app is now up and running. Uh, for my tag I'm going to put my name uh, like that. I'm going to register. Notice we do get a device registered toast here. And if I open a Postman tab, and in the body, I'm actually going to specify tags, and our tags are going to be an array like that. And I'll put my tag as my name and see what happens. Let this run in the background and send. Notice. I get a notification. And if I just uh, personalize this so we can be sure, I'll call this uh, Ronaldo's notification. Send that again. We get Ronaldo's notification. And just to show you, if I do make this uh, just Ronaldo, so it's a different tag, it won't be received. It just won't be sent to this device at all because we registered with the Ronaldo Butteris tag. And if I don't put any tags, it will be received. We'll do the same thing with iOS exactly. And here we go. So first of all, we can forget about the uh, Android. I'll go to iOS and add an existing folder. This is the same services folder from the other Xamarin Forms project. And I'll also add another existing folder, and that existing folder is the extensions. And after we've done that, I will um, first of all open main.storyboard uh, and uh, do that as we like. We like a button, another button, and a, an entry. Okay, let's make this big. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this button. And so I'm going to add text field. And uh, we'll, we'll set constraints. I'll add a button. Uh, 
and I'll add another button deregister uh, sorry button deregister and I'll open the dot uh, hate file for the view controller and I'll actually just control drag each one to here and before I do that I'll get rid of this one I'll control drag to here and I'll call this the uh, tag text field and I'll call this the register button I'll call this the deregister button okay there we are if you save both that is our interface complete and now I can go to uh, app delegate and before I go to app delegate actually I will um, configure I will configure info.plist info.plist we've got uh, the correct bundle identifier we need uh, to make sure we have the correct provisioning profile selected then entitlements.plist enable push notifications and you'll notice development is here okay the next thing to do is uh, work the app delegate I'm going to take all these overrides out except the uh, finished launching I'm going to copy from the other app delegate and the first thing we need is uh, our three properties in their backing fields and uh, I'll just add a few using directives and um, the next thing we need to do is call bootstrap.begin and uh, a few other lines as well so the next thing I'll do is add um, in the finished launching I'll add bootstrap.begin and pass our device installation service The next thing I'll do is uh, request authorization if notifications are supported. The next thing we'll do is override a few methods, three methods in fact. And these are registered for remote notifications, received remote notifications, and failed to register for remote notifications. Uh, complete registration async will we'll make a method here. So the first thing we do is uh, register for remote notifications and this will actually forget about that obviously we could use Xamarin Essentials and do main thread dot begin invoke main thread or we can just use uh, the platform specific version and we wouldn't actually need these push settings here and so I'll just comment them out for now this is for, I believe, under iOS 8, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Uh, the next thing we'll do is also copy another, another method, complete registration async. And we can use to hex string from our extensions. We can use uh, system.threading.tasks. And finally, we have our uh, process notification actions method. As you can see, I'm copying directly, I'm not changing much. Just add a using directive there. Now we'll actually add our action triggered event handler. And to do that, over here, before we do that, in fact, we'll need to add this line of code. This will uh, process notification actions and once we've got our service container we can actually do that again we'll create ourselves a method here and this what this method will do is just create a notification that will say notification received and it will be whatever passed as the push demo action this will give us an alert, just like uh, the Android Toast. Finally, uh, we're done with App Delegate. 
The next thing to do is to configure our view controller. Now our view controller, we can forget about this override here. Forget about the count and forget about this button. Now here I'm going to add a read-only I notification registration service. Now that field will store an instance uh, that we'll get from the service container in our constructor. Now what we need to do now is implement uh, the functionality for the button. So we'll have our register button dot uh, touch up inside plus equal delegates and this delegate here will have um, this delegate here will have notification registration service dot uh, register device async and actually we'll pass our tag text field dot text as our tags. Now I'll just grab this as a task and once I've grabbed this as a task I'll um, I'll create an alert controller uh, UI alert controller dot create the title is going to be registration the body will be well is task faulted if it is then task dot exception dot message uh, otherwise we'll just say uh, device registered and finally we'll have our U, uh, UI alert uh, controller style dot alert then we'll say ok alert controller we'll add an action to it so add action uh, UI alert UI alert action dot create ok UI alert action style dot default no as the handler finally we'll present the view controller so prevent view controller uh, ok alert controller true for animated and no completion handler I'll do exactly the same thing for uh, deregistering so deregister button will deregister a device async and we won't pass anything here and we'll say deregistered and uh, deregistration that is all fine okay so now I'm going to actually run this on my physical device again this has to be a physical device okay so as you can see here I've got my app up and running I'm going to uh, specify tag I'll do exactly the same thing register device has been registered now I'll need to go to the uh, notification page and make sure the app is running in the background. Okay, so once I've got that, I'll go to Postman and send a new notification with no tags. That arrives. And I've said Ronaldo's notification. Now, if I put in the tag uh, Ronaldo Butrus, we'll get that. However, if I say uh, not for you and I'll say uh, nobody's notification that won't actually arrive I hope that's given you an insight as to how to use uh, the same implementation uh, that the docs have specified for Xamarin Forms for Xamarin Native through a web API uh, there might be better ways of doing this there probably are better ways of doing this but I find that this method works and uh, it's easy to adapt from Xamarin Forms to the Xamarin Native. So if you do decide, for example, to change change how you've designed your app or uh, whatever it is, here you are. I hope these uh, the series has been very helpful, and thank you very much.